Do the C word. At least the teacher will know when you come in if you had sleep the night before. If you're wearing good clothes. If you're taking care of yourself. You know, so that they can see that. And that the minute something changes, not wait till it blows over, address the situation in you. Same for bullying. <coughs> Communication. Okay, I'm going to get a little more in depth on that. I'll get my handy dandy notebook here. You know, I coach basketball, football. And I had one kid in football, he was really working hard. And in basketball, he just was lazy. You know, and we were like, come on, come on, let's run. We're running sprints, man. Basketball sprinting. You got to know that. Up and down. Set a full court trap. Whatever, you're running. And this kid would not go. His face was flushed. Like, his face was just red. And he was just gasping for air. And I thought, well, he was running just fine in football. He had every known allergy known to man. And we didn't know it. He didn't know it. And what do you think? The first thing I did was put that in my brain. So the next time I'm coaching and I see somebody really trying hard and their face is red, maybe they should get checked for allergies. You see what I'm saying? And I'm saying the same like teachers. And you guys see a friend of yours hurting? Look for that. I was in a school in Oklahoma, at-risk school, tough place. Kids spitting on the floor, throwing gum in the way. Putting kids in lockers. It was pretty tough. I had a teacher, I was a student teacher. My cooperating teacher was a person who taught math for five years. He doesn't like confrontation, and he's a middle school PE teacher. It's kind of hard to not like confrontation if you're a middle school PE teacher. But there were some students, one student kept looking at this other one. And kept looking and kept looking. And, you know, at first I didn't say anything. And I said, you know, you need to watch that kid over there. And I'm not judging the brick by his cover. Because I can see him looking at the ball and looking up at this other one. And I read lips. So I know what he said to the other kid. And I said, you better walk over there and take that ball from him. They were kind of stretching out. But he was kind of, you know how kids, you got it all right. Who cares? All right. You reach over and grab something. You want to hit somebody. You kind of reach it without anybody looking. And I said, you better get over there. And so I got up and walked over there. As soon as I got to the kid he was looking at, he threw the ball, and I caught it. And he's like, <laughs> but it's obvious. It's right there in front of you. And I told that teacher, I said, you've got to see this. You've got to be observant. I tell my kids all the time, be aware of your surroundings. Know what's going on. You know, maybe too busy. Know what's going on. But, you know, that kid, kept looking at me from then on out. And hopefully that teacher understood what it's like to see them. I, you know, when I was coaching girls, seventh and eighth grade basketball, I coached a girl seventh grade assistant, and you know, they were all doing a, doing a lot of cheerleading standards. And you know, they were doing this. And they were talking. I read lips across the gym. And they were talking about this kid, this boy. And I walked over and I said, you know, you really shouldn't say that about so-and-so. It's not funny. How would you know? You read my mind. You know? It's like, well, I didn't want to tell him I read lips. I don't see what happened, man. Well, unfortunately, he found out. So, next week in practice, I look around, I see him going like this. I said, move your hand. And I go, Ludwig, he's psycho. You can read your mind. <laughs> What'd you say? Hmm? Expand your frame of reference. Okay? Expand your knowledge. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about cyberbullying. Cyberbullying. I used to play World of Warcraft. I know a lot of you guys know what that is. It's so cool. World of Warcraft is an online game that I play with my high school buddy from Florida. Cyberbullying is bad on that game. Some of you guys might be out. I mean, it's bad. Slip wrist. Your mom, you know. It's not funny. Some of you guys are talking about, like, Facebook. 
It goes on in Facebook, right? Why surround yourself with that? You can't get rid of cyberbullying, but you can get rid of the people in your realm, in your world. Why, can, why would you surround yourself with that? If you have friends in Yahoo, yeah, if you have friends in Facebook that are abusing somebody else or saying things that you know that's not appropriate, then get rid of them. Okay? And this is my other one. Well, hold on. Yeah. Don't be afraid of confrontation. Yeah, even adults today are afraid of confrontation. They're kind of waiting for it to blow over. You can't. You, and I'm not saying go up to the bone and go, what's up, man? You got problems with me, man? You got problems with me, man? Everybody want to go back like down? It's not going to work that way. All right? You don't want to get in somebody's face. You don't you know, like my suit? What up, man? It's a $4,000 suit. You know what I'm but you don't want that because it adds fuel to the fire in you. <clears throat> How many of you have seen Blind Stop? This movie? You remember when she's driving in the car and he's sitting in the passenger seat and he's not saying anything? What's wrong, Big Mike? What's wrong, Big Mike? Mike, 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 no, no, no. What's wrong, Big Mike? Big Mike, Big Mike, what's wrong? And she's driving, he's not saying anything, right? What does she do? She pulls over, turns off the car, rolls up the window, turns off the music. It's just them two. <coughs> what's wrong, Big Mike? She lowers her voice. I detect that. I know when you're lying. Because you talk really high like this, but you're excited. But if you're mellowed out, and the teachers realize that too, when you go to an environment, and I speak to you now like this, and you guys start to calm down and start to listen to me, I'm setting the tone. She set the tone. Big Mike, Big Mike, what's wrong? What does he say? I don't like being called Big Mike. And then the whole story opened up right there, didn't it? They got, they got to know each other really well. Just because she had to go through that to get to know them. Teachers and students, you guys need to do that. If you got a bully, maybe you can talk to your teacher and say, I got a deep breath, take a deep breath. I want to talk to this kid. I don't want you to solve it for me because he's going to keep making fun of me. I need you to sit down and talk to him. Remove, don't talk. You know, Big Mike probably been asked a hundred thousand times. Big Mike, Big Mike. And he probably told people over and over again, I don't like being called Big Mike. But they weren't serious. They didn't take him serious. That's probably why she had to pull over. And that's what you guys have to do. You may have to take a minute and say, what's your problem? You know, but don't be like, what's your problem, man? What's your problem? You don't like my shoes? Might have been a good man. You don't have to do that. You don't have somebody come up to me because you're stupid. I'm just like, okay. You're a real winner. You got a lot of friends on your side. Make sure that you have friends that will be your friend. Not your friend here during the day, and then you decide to go to recess, or you can decide to go to the uh, park, and then that same friend here is up with those other three guys over here. Does he think he's going to treat you the same with those three guys that he was just with you alone? Why is that happening? Why is it Jeremy treats me like I'm his buddy, but then when he hangs out with Brad and Mike, he acts like I'm not even existing. Don't do that. Communicate. If Jeremy, do you, do you think he would rather have me as a true friend than those other two guys making fun of me? Honestly. Do you think he would probably share us our relationship more than those other two guys? Just think, if you were to break that barrier down and said, hey, don't tease him. He's a cruel guy. Once you get to know him, he may talk funny, but he's good at sports. But he, I just made my, I just made four friends, or three friends. He just made another friend. Hey, it's good to have friends. As long as you communicate. That C word. Right? Quit looking up there, guys. <laughs> Making me nervous. Four more minutes! We're out of here! Try to eliminate what you're being made fun of. If you're 
be a bowling club, you'll be a bowling club. Okay? Find a good church family or your own family. Find a family that will support you. If it's not your own, I'm sorry to hear that. Find somebody that will support you. Okay? Surround yourself with people. Listen, do your thing. Don't be what your friends want you to be so you can be accepted. Don't do a backspin in the middle of the third floor. Be yourself, do what you're good at doing, and hopefully your friends will join you. There are some teachers out there or co-workers, you know, I really hate bowling, but I'm going to go because I, you know, I really rather do sewing. Then go sew. You'll meet people there that want to be your friend, and you will be together. Boyfriends and girlfriends. <coughs> Same thing. Do things you want to do that you like to do together. Don't do something you hate to do just because you want to be accepted. And guys, you may have to hurt somebody's feelings. It might be for the better, though. I've hurt a lot of people's feelings. But they understand where I'm coming from. If you have a friend that you really care about, say, hey, I don't like being called Big Mike, but I want you to be my friend. I don't like riding my bike at 20 below zero like you do, but I do it because I want you to be my friend. What may hurt your feelings? Well, I don't like riding my bike at 20 below zero. Don't do it. Wear what you want to wear that's appropriate and take care of yourself. Don't do it because that person's doing it. Okay? Stick up for yourself in a respectful way. Like I said, don't get in your face, man. You don't need to get in your face. Be respectful to yourself and others. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. If you're going to get your feelings hurt, get it over with. If you're going to hurt somebody else's feelings because not being rude, but to respect your own wishes, then you're going to have to tell them. Okay? And guess what? That breaks the communication barrier a lot easier. Hey, next time don't invite him because he didn't have a really good time. We did things that were inappropriate and he doesn't like that. Okay? Cool. Next time, find a group that you want to be with that does things you like to do within reason. That's respectful to other people. Leaders, a couple of things before you head out. Your parents and teachers, you look up to them. You should look up to your parents. You should look up to your teachers. They work extremely hard to get you where you're at. Don't be afraid to communicate with them. I didn't tell my parents that I was being made fun of. I didn't tell them because my father was superintendent, legislator, college <laughs> president. I didn't want to tell him. I didn't want him to look down on me. But eventually you're going to have to tell him. Okay? Your teachers, they work really hard. They have a family too. And they care about you as well. If you have a problem, Big Mike, shut everything down, wait till people leave, say, I just want to talk to you for a minute. Within reason. You know what I'm saying? If you're in athletics, or if you do other organizations, keep doing it. Do what you're good at. In football, you guys have practice before the season, your school starts. Guess what? If you go to those kids at the beginning of school, if you go to those kids at the beginning of school and say, quit bullying him, quit bullying her, you set the tone, basketball, football, baseball, you set the tone in that school. You tell these kids to quit making fun of the other one, and they'll listen to you, they look up to you, the first year of school, guess who's going to be coming to your games? You know, all these kids that you have kind of took under your wing, you guys set the tone. Volleyball, basketball, um, debate. Keep doing what you're good at. Be successful in it. <laughs> Do not let anybody hold you down. And last thing is, who do you live for? Why are you here? What are you doing? You get up every day. Why are you here? Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you.